Good morning, everyone. I hope you're finding opportunity to draw near to God during this quarantine, and I hope that you all had a really great Easter. Um, Billy and Sam, I hope you enjoyed your, your pizza on Thursday. Uh, don't forget that uh, we have our weekly Bible study on Wednesdays uh, on Zoom, uh, 7 p.m. for middle school and 8 for high school. Um, parents, you should get that information in your email sent to you every week uh, on how to join that. If not, please uh, let me know, or if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, why don't you turn in your Bibles, and we're going to start start off just by reading uh, John 20, 10 through 18. That's John 20, 10 through 18. <clears throat> then dis the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, as we, we look at your word uh, this morning, um, just help us to, to understand what you have to say to us. Um, open our hearts, open up our, our minds, um, open our ears to, to your word, your son's name. Amen. So in high school, I took a bunch of music classes, music theory, uh, music technology, choir, and, and others. I, I took all these classes and I, and I passed them all. I still remember uh, a lot of what I learned, uh, the different notes, how chords work, um, the different shapes and symbols on sheet music, um, I, knowing how to use basic recording equipment. The only problem is that I can't play music. I can't look at a piece of music, I can't look at sheet music, um, and, and sit down at an instrument and play it. Uh, my actual musical skill consists of knowing where a C is on a piano, uh, three chords on the guitar, only two of which I could tell you what I'm actually playing, um, and the tabs uh, for parts of a few songs on guitar. Uh, I have the, the head knowledge of music, um, but when I actually put that knowledge to practice, there's a gap. Um, there's a gap between my head, my, my knowledge that I have, and my heart, my, my desire, my longing to play music. Uh, you know, I want to be able to play guitar. Um, I know how they work. I know what the strings are, um, but I can't actually play them. Maybe you know a lot about something, too. Maybe... Maybe you know the science, uh, the ins and outs of how something works, um, but when it comes down to um, actually having the skill to do that thing, um, you simply can't. Uh, not for lack of knowledge, but a, but a lack of skill. Maybe you have a gap between your, your head, your knowledge of that thing, and your, your heart, your desire, um, your habits, your longings to do that thing. And I think we'll see as we look at this text this morning, when we look at John 20, uh, 10 through 18, that Mary Magdalene, in a lot of ways, is like us. Um, you know, she spent a lot of time with the teacher, with Jesus, who she really loved. She sat at his feet. She was taught by him. Yet when the knowledge um, needed to turn into action, there was a gap for her. There was a gap between her head and her heart. So Jesus had just been crucified. Uh, we just celebrated this last Easter. Um, he had, he'd been buried uh, Good Friday, um, but yet on Easter, on that Sunday, he, he had risen. The tomb was empty. Uh, you know, we read um, in verses 1 through 9 last week that, that Peter and John ran to the tomb. Uh, they raced to the tomb, and, um, and then they ran off again, trying to figure out what happened. But, but we, we learn here that Mary stayed. Uh, Peter and John left, but Mary stayed, and she wept. Her Savior, her friend, her teacher was gone. She didn't know where he was. She's feeling far away from, from her teacher and her friend. He's not there. Um, she asked multiple times, 
um, if people know where Jesus is. She asks angels, she asks Jesus himself, who she didn't recognize. She's looking for him. And I think if we really look at who Mary is, um, we'll see that you and I um, are in a lot of ways similar to her. You know, we look at Mary and we see that Mary is a sinner who had her sin exposed by Jesus. Um, you know, we're told in, in Luke 8 and Mark 16 that Mary at one point had seven demons cast out of her. Uh, her sin her sin was great. Uh, you know, we don't know all the details, um, but we know that Jesus cast all seven of those demons out. Um, he took her sin, he took her literal demons, um, exposed it, and removed it. He cast it out of her. She no longer had seven demons, but she had a Savior now whom she loved and adored and learned from. And Jesus does the same for us. He takes our sin, uh, whatever that sin may be. In Mary's case, she had seven demons. In our case, it could be pride. It could be selfishness. Um, it could be any number of things. Um, he exposes it, um, and he deals with it. That's what Jesus does on the cross. That's his, his passive obedience. He, he justifies us. Uh, he makes us. He makes our, our wrong right. Uh, he went to the cross as a payment for our debt. Romans 3, 23 through 25 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. Our sin had torn a relationship with God, but through Jesus, through Jesus exposing our sin, showing us our need of our Savior, showing us a need for him, uh, Jesus redeems and reconciles us. Um, that is what he did for Mary, and that is what he does for us. He, he takes our sin, he exposes it, he deals with it, and he forgives it. Mary was a forgiven sinner, and so are we. Just like Mary, uh, you know, we know a lot of what Jesus taught. Um, Luke 10 tells us that Mary sat at Jesus' feet and listened to his teaching. She knew what he said. She knew what he claimed, uh, what he claimed to be. She heard him say that he would be raised on the third day. She knew that he said he was going to die. She had the head knowledge. You know, I'm sure, you know, I could ask you guys uh, questions about the Bible, about who's this person or, or what, what happened here, or um, do you remember this verse that you, that you memorized? And I'm sure you guys could, could give me the right answers. You know the stories. Uh, you have that head knowledge, and that, that's a good thing. We, we should know it. We should know um, stories and characters and verses and songs um, and all of those things. But, but just like my musical training, if I want to actually play music, um, I can't just have the head knowledge about music. But I must practice and practice and practice. I need to sit at a piano and play a bunch of notes, probably poorly and, and most likely slowly, and over time I'll hopefully get better. We should, we should know all about the Bible. Who is who, what happened, uh, different verses. Um, but that head knowledge uh, is most beneficial when it translates into our heart knowledge, when it, when it changes our hearts and changes our actions and desires. Mary knew all that Jesus had taught, that he would be raised on the third day, yet she still searched for his body in the tomb. Because just like Mary, she knew all these things, but there was a disconnect uh, between her head knowledge uh, and her heart, her actions, her desires, her longings. Um, Mary searched for Jesus. She looked for him. He wasn't where he was supposed to be. She stooped into the tomb, our text says. She asked the angel. She asked Jesus, who she didn't recognize at first, where Jesus' body was. She wanted to honor her teacher, her friend, um, but he wasn't there. She longed to be with him again, um, even if he was dead. She longed for her teacher and her friend, so she searched. In a lot of ways, Mary's kind of like a lost sheep without a shepherd. Um, her teacher's gone. She felt hopeless. She was alone. Uh, she wanted to sit at his feet and hear him once again. She was lost without him, so she, she, she searched. She should have known this would happen, though. She heard him say that he would die uh, on multiple occasions. She heard him say that he would be raised on the third day. She should have remembered that when she saw the empty tomb. She should have, instead of looking for his body, be calling out for him, asking where he is. Um, she's lost. There was a gap between her head and her heart, what she knew and how she acted and, and what she was looking for. Uh, but like a lost sheep whose shepherd calls her by name, she's comforted when the good shepherd, when Jesus calls her by name. All it took was him to say Mary, and she recognized him. 
She searched for Jesus, her friend, her teacher, and her savior. She searched and found not a distant Jesus who is still dead, but a living savior who has conquered death. So if I want to learn to play music, I can't just study music theory. I can't just know the ins and outs and the science behind music. I need to sit down at a piano and practice. I'll play all the wrong notes probably at first, but if I keep it up over time, I'll hopefully get better and better. In the same way, I can't be content just knowing about Jesus, what he said, what he did. I need to let that head knowledge uh, about him change my heart, my actions, my life, my habits. You know, so often uh, I would say things like, I know I should read my Bible. Or I know I should pray. Maybe I'm at a, at a, at a winter retreat and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start reading my Bible every day after this. And by, by Tuesday, I'm not anymore. Um, often I have a disconnect between what I know and what I do. And I need to learn from Mary here. Even if I don't fully understand what I'm doing, I need to search for Jesus. I need to take action in order to draw near to him. Mary searched for Jesus even though she thought he was dead. And she found a risen Savior. She found so much more than what she was looking for. So we need to take action. We need to search for Jesus. We need to look for our shepherd. A good shepherd will search for a sheep. And the good shepherd will show up. As we learn to seek him out in prayer, in Bible reading, in journaling, or any other spiritual discipline, it, it may be awkward. It, it may be hard. Uh, learning how to play piano means that you start playing all the wrong notes. Um, but over time, uh, your fingers uh, build muscle memory. Your ears start understanding um, notes and how it's supposed to sound. And it, and it becomes, you know, second nature. Um, so when picking up the Bible for the first time or, or praying for the, for the first time or trying to make these disciplines a habit, um, putting that, that head knowledge into, into heart knowledge, into heart action, um, into habits, it, it may be hard to focus. It, it may be challenging to pay attention or, or know what to say. You know, I found that, that journaling my thoughts during that time is, is beneficial. Um, but when we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. So seek him out. Search for him. He will show up. Uh, it, it may be awkward, um, but it will be good. Draw near to him and he'll draw near to you and, and, and learn how to play, play the piano. But it, it doesn't end there. Uh, Mary searched for Jesus. She, she drew near to him. It, she, her reaction was to cling to him when she found the risen Savior. But what does Jesus ask her to do? He tells her to, to not just cling to her, um, but to go. To go tell others that he is risen. That he is alive. That we are united with him. That his God is our God. And his Father is our Father. So as we seek Jesus out, draw near to him. Go to him in prayer, in Bible reading, in journaling, or any other spiritual di discipline. But then we need to be going and telling others about him. Uh, we need to go and proclaim who Jesus is and what he has done. So draw near to him and help others do the same. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you um, that you are a good God, that if we draw near to you, that you will draw near to us. Help us remember that. Help us to look at Mary and realize that just like Mary, that we're a sinner who has been forgiven. Um, that we have the knowledge about you and help us to, to shorten that gap between our knowledge about you and how we live our lives. Help us to draw near to you and help others to do the same. In your son's name, amen.